Hey, this is Sid with Table Talk with Sid Features. I'm with Donnie Angel, the Practical Mystic, Rev Jody, The Erotic Life. We're back and we're excited to, to have the discussion on stress during the holidays. Jody's the one that brought this up and I think it's a fabulous topic to have, especially since we're coming upon the holidays. I think that uh, that stress that everybody has within the holidays is a sad thing because it really does um, alter the way we think about the giving. I think a lot of people don't even really notice the giving. And uh, the, the thoughts of family and being close to people and and it's it's continuing to be that rush around. So Jody, since you're the one that brought up the topic, uh, I would like to hear your thoughts about how to minimize the stress during the holiday, how to find the good, and how to uh, create the type of holiday you, not you as a person, but people in general, for that each individual to create on their own. Because I think that is part of the hiccup out in society is that everyone feels like they have to be doing what everybody else does for the holiday and how they do it instead of creating their own traditions or, in their, or their own things that mean something to them. Well, I think I, I take a little bit different um, approach to the holidays. Um, to me, family is like the, the number one thing. And so I'm just not one that I try to keep up with the Joneses. To me, it's like, okay, what am I going to do to make sure that I'm spending time with family? Mm -hmm. That's all I care about. I mean, for my birthday, my grandson took me to McDonald's. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't care what we did for my birthday. I cared that I got to spend time with him. I took one Christmas, um, I took my daughter on a cruise for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And it was the funniest experience. We had the best time ever. Mm -hmm. But before we even left, she comes to me and she says, you know, I have, I have my list for Santa Claus, and I said, oh, a cruise isn't good enough for you. And she goes, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not another word said. We come back from the cruise, and all of her friends are clamoring to our house to find out about her cruise, but not one of them talked about the gifts they got for Christmas. Right. They didn't care. It was the experience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They wanted to know about the experience we had. Those are memories that we will always treasure and share. I don't remember what gifts I've gotten throughout right. the years, and neither does anybody else. So why do we put so much stress on ourselves in trying to get all these fabulous gifts? Why can't we focus on what we can do to have quality time together? That's what matters. <laughs> you know, I think that's an interesting point because I was speaking to my girlfriend. It's kind of off the subject, but she was having a hard time in her marriage. And one of their biggest arguments, which I thought, because, you know, when marriage mm -hmm. sort of tumbles down, it tumbles down. But yeah. one of their biggest arguments is television watching. Okay, she is not a television watcher. He loves to watch television. And she was so angry and uh, because he wants her to watch TV with him. And I said to her, is it really the television watching? Or is it more about the time spent with someone you love who loves doing something he would like to share with you. And I think in the end, what we, many of us get lost in is the end result. It's, is it really the television? It's really not the television. And I think if we all can get better at reorganizing and altering our focus and really understanding like what you said, Jody, it wasn't McDonald's. It was the thought, number one and that he wanted to give from himself to you, and that he wanted to spend time with you. That was the gift. It wasn't whether he had gone to a fancy restaurant or McDonald's. It's irrelevant, right? It's, it's the point of the people. So Donnie, I, I'd like to hear from you what uh, your point of view is, because I, I really think, Jody, you hit upon something very important. It is the time with people. And, and I think it is the thought. You know, um, there are a few presents that I remember receiving. And they were always the ones where someone had put a tremendous amount of thought So it wasn't effort. price. It was absolutely not price. I always go back to um, a really important Christmas to me. My mom and dad got married when I was six. And they had absolutely no money. My mom was pregnant with my little sister, and then I had a, I was uh, six, and my other sister was four and a half. And we were so excited for Christmas, and they knew that. 
Well, Christmas morning comes and we wake up to the most amazing dollhouse you've ever seen in your life. And I found out later my parents had spent months, probably five months, building wow. from scratch this dollhouse. They had My dad, who is an artist for a living, had painted miniature paintings and framed them for all the rooms in the dollhouse. Do you still have it? I don't. Um, oh, we played till that thing fell apart. Oh. <laughs> we used it. Uh -huh. But they'd gone and gotten carpet samples and, and wow. wallpaper samples for free, different places, and made us this amazing dollhouse. And what I remember the feeling of how loved I felt. Mm -hmm. I just remember, like, Whoa, I didn't know they loved me that much. Right. And for me, having a stepdad at that age, it really solidified that I knew he cared about me and my mm -hmm. sister, that he had gone to all of this effort. I think it is the quality time, and I think it's also the thought mm -hmm. right. that right. counts. There's so many ways that we can show people that we love them, and it really truly does not have to be about money. On Black Friday. No, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't have to be about that. Now with, I have, you know, four children between the ages of, well, eight, actually, and my daughter turns nine tomorrow, mm. and 23, <laughs> and so Christmas is interesting because right. with grown kids, anyone out there who knows this, and I know you two both have kids that are a little bit older too, it's hard mm -hmm. to figure out what to get them for Christmas, and I just try to still stick with something that is either going to be an experience for them mm -hmm. or something that will matter to them personally that they know I'm paying attention. Right. To the, so it's to me it is not about the amount of money. If you have that money, great. But a lot of us don't. Mm -hmm. And we're working on a budget, but we still want to have a good time. And I totally agree with what you're saying, Jody, about the quality time spent. I'm the oldest of eight children, and for my family, all of the holidays are just about us being together. Mm -hmm. We still spend Christmas morning at my mom and dad's. You know, for Thanksgiving, two days from now, I'm in a... <laughs> my parents have a tiny little house, and there'll be 50 of us. Wow. <laughs> crammed in there in different rooms at different tables, loving every second of it. Mm -hmm. You know, speaking of being crammed in, one of my favorite memories was um, when my parents lived um, locally here in town in, in West Jordan. They... Uh, had they would have all the family gatherings at their small little house and we took a family picture one day in the living room there were so many people in there that we were some of us were actually laying on the floor <laughs> on top of everybody else <laughs> and it was just the most awesome picture i mean we packed the living room to get this family picture and the person taking the picture was all crammed up against the wall. That was the most fun, just cramming mm -hmm. everybody in there. I mean, laying on the floor and on top of everybody, it was just the silliest thing, but that was one of the best Christmases. Mm -hmm. Just having fun and spending time with everybody. I don't want the gifts. I just keep going for, you know, what's going to create the greatest memories. The gifts are, you know, they're yeah. going to fall apart. They're going to be obsolete. Yeah. But those memories, they'll and, never be obsolete. Go ahead. I think with the stress factor, too, so many people, and I was this person, as I've spoken to before, in my 20s and 30s, I was a complete perfectionist. I had attachment to the outcome of how I wanted it to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so here I am with this huge family, and of course it's never going to go perfect, and it's always going to be somewhat chaotic. And Which is the beauty. Which is the beauty, <laughs> but I didn't realize that until the last couple of years. I turn myself over to it. On Thanksgiving, I'll go to my parents' house and I will just surrender mm -hmm. to the chaos. I will not worry that the silverware doesn't match. Absolutely. Turns out it's hard to get matching silverware for 50 people. <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> um, I will not worry about whose babies are crying or if the mashed potatoes are cold or all of those things that used to drive me crazy. I will just go and surrender to the moment. And that has probably been the number one thing I've done to change my stress level. Mm. You know, I, I think that's interesting because what it's sort of similar. What I love doing when it comes to the family get-togethers and quote-unquote high pressure, I love walking in because it is so much like a television show, mm -hmm. right? When you just allow everyone to be who they are and do what they do, all the little hiccups, all the things that don't that are far from perfect... That's what people are always trying to work into their scripts, right? You can never write a script as brilliant as what life is. Right. And so I do love, and, and I will agree, because there was a long time in my life 
that I like things, the way I like things, this is how it needs to work, this is what we're doing, and it would just stress me out if yes. anything went a little right or a little left. And now being able to walk in, and I, and I actually say this to myself, go see it as a movie or go see it as a television show. And all of a sudden, it becomes very entertaining, is very enlightening, it's, it's uplifting. But I would like to also address this the, the, uh, with children. Because a lot of, I have a 14-year-old and an 11-year-old. And my 14-year-old has definitely gotten herself into brand-oriented thinking, mm. right? And I, I'm not for that. I'm definitely not a mom that supports in the brand-oriented <laughs> thinking. Yet we, you know, just due to where we live, many of those parents with the other children think that way. I mean, when you go to a high school, this... Okay, I won't get off topic, but I just have to say this. When I go to a high school and I see these 16-year-olds driving around a brand new BMW and a brand new 2016 Jeep, there's a problem here. This is what you, how you create entitlement in children. This is how you create children who think you get whatever my parents have because I, I'm do it, right? So I think it's, this is um, a good topic and a good part of this discussion. Ladies, what do you do? to help your children to find gratitude, to, uh, especially when they're surrounded with entitlement and, and the branding, right? And uh, you, I deserve it. So we'll start with you, Diane. I have and this same think. exact situation. So my children, my three older children, also <coughs> went, my, went to high schools. My third son is already there, still there at that high school. Same situation, very wealthy. And here I was, this single mom, of these kids going to these schools and I actually ended up just sitting them down and having a very raw and real conversation with them first of all I would tell them stories from my childhood I would talk to them about what it was like you know to have Christmas when with parents who had eight children and not a lot of money and then I would explain to them I want you guys to know I love you is there something we could do together is there some time we could spend together that would be you know something you guys would really appreciate so I would ask them. I was always asking them what they wanted as far as time with me, mm -hmm. as far as experiences. And I just kind of created the focus to be on that. So we would do baking days. You know, we would go to my mom's house. That was the big thing my, my girls especially always look forward to. Even now, my daughter's 23 now. She still wants to go to grandma's house and bake gingerbread cookies mm -hmm. for the holidays. I myself had the focus on experiences, and I feel like our children watch us. And if Absolutely. we have those conversations with them and we just help them see the bigger picture, mm -hmm. it really didn't end up being a huge issue. Right. My kids were always grateful for what they had. And they, I just asked them, try not to compare. Mm -hmm. When you go back to school after the holidays and people are talking about what they got, just try not to compare. Just try to focus on how much time we spent together mm -hmm. and how good it felt. Well, there's actually this, um, this vocalist who he has several hit uh, songs out and this was really touching because at first ah, he was just a vocalist to me till I heard his life story because he had this song out and was talking about his life and coming from nothing moving to something and he had mentioned in this interview that his mother was a single mother uh, like us and um, he would go to school and all the kids would tell him how bad his life was and that he doesn't have enough and blah 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 and he said one day <clears throat> he came home and his mom sat him all on the bed, and she said, but we do have enough. We have a roof over our head. We have food in the fridge. I can get you to school. You're getting an education. And he said, so he grew up seeing that his life was enough, that he had everything he wanted, and that when you're looking for what you want and what you have, you always have enough. When you don't have enough is when you're looking for what you don't have and why you didn't get it, then you never have enough. So I thought that was very powerful and that even nowadays we have this artist that's singing about the fact that we don't have to have a life like Susie down the street to have enough. We have enough when we look for what we have. There's so, always someone that has more, right? right. So in more that context, less. you could drive yourself crazy. Absolutely, which a lot of people do. Truth. Yeah. 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 So Jody, what do you have for that? Well. You know, I, I didn't have, and maybe this is, you know, like you said, Donnie, this is just kind of 
the way that I, I raised my daughter, but she was never one to, to want the brands or, or seek out what her friends had. But I always had, and maybe this is just because this is how I brought myself up. Um, I had my first job when I was 11 years old. If I wanted stuff, I earned money to get what I wanted. Mm -hmm. And yes. so anytime my daughter would ask me for something, I would ask her, well, how are you going to get that? Mm -hmm. And boy, that kid is industrious. Man, when she sets her mind to getting something, I mean, she's 27 now, but she used to go over, it was so funny, she had adult friends. Mm -hmm. Don't know why, but she always had adult friends. And all of a sudden, she'd come back to, and I don't know if these are still a thing, but she comes home with these brand new Heelys one day. <laughs> and I'm going, where on earth did you get those? <laughs> Well, one of her adult friends bought them for her. <laughs> and I go over. This woman worked at a sporting goods store near us. And I'm like, why did you buy her those? Oh, because I wanted to. <laughs> no. But this girl could charm anybody or she'd mm -hmm. go out and earn money from people to get what she wanted. So she didn't expect um, you to generate all of that. And she her. didn't expect anybody else either. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, she was never afraid to ask for what she wanted either. Sure, that's she didn't have an expectation. Right. But she would just say, Hey, this is what I want, and she'd ask for it. And, and she got those <laughs> early. <get it. laughs> you know, that is interesting because my I raised my kids similar. They know I've I've said them I've told them since ground zero I'm not the bank. Right. So I'll provide for you, you know, for the necessities. But you want those extras, like my daughter, who's the brand oriented one. I say to her, I'm not saying no to the brand. I'm saying that if that's really what you want. You're going to have to figure out how to earn the money, how to budget for it, and how to save for it. You can have anything you want. I'm not going to keep things from you, but I'm definitely not Mrs. Walmart, you know? So my girls never ask for money. I really appreciate that. They're always asking, what can I do to earn money? They'll ask, how can I save money to get a, B, C, and D. And so my brand-oriented child, though, it is interesting. This year, she's not so brand-oriented <laughs> because she has found it takes a lot of extra side work to earn that $300 for that pair of whatever boots that, you know, her friend's wearing. She's like, oh, maybe I don't need those boots. Maybe not her. <laughs> Get her to create her own brand. Exactly. Instead, she could make money from her clothing line instead. Yeah. <laughs> one, of my, one of my tricks, and maybe it's too late this year for this to matter... So I have 38 nieces and nephews, and I love getting them each a little something. And that's a lot of gifts mm -hmm, to get. Mm -hmm. So I actually shop year-round, mm -hmm. all year. I probably, st well, I probably start in March every year. If I'm out and I see a great sale, I grab some stuff. Mm -hmm. By the time Christmas comes around, there's not a lot of stress there. There's not yeah. a lot of, it's amazing when you're just spending 10 bucks here, 20 bucks there. It's a lot different than going and having to put a couple of grand on a credit card. Right. Um, and that's something I decided a long time ago is that I wouldn't be putting Christmas on a credit card. Absolutely. I agree 100%. I just, I that's wanted just it downfall. to be what we could afford at the time. Mm -hmm. And that has been a tremendous blessing to me to just have it mostly, mm -hmm. mostly taken care of. The other thing is I got clear on what mattered to me. Absolutely. So Christmas cards are very, very important to me. That's my tradition. I do a Christmas Not card every card, year. Not any card, but the an actual, actual card physical that they Christmas put card. In, that I put in the mail. And even one year, I was really struggling financially, and that was what I chose to do over a lot of other things. Was mm -hmm. that Christmas card? Because it matters to me. I think right. getting clear on what your priorities actually are. Absolutely. Is a big part of it. Then you're not trying to put your energy and your money and time into too, too many different directions. Right. And you know, my dad always raised us by uh, life lessons. And I remember when I was younger, I was probably, I don't know, maybe 11, 10 or 11, you know, that I need more, give me more. And I remember him putting me in the car, taking me down to a shelter. And he says, this is not to judge these people. This is for you to see that there are people that are struggling. There are children that may not get anything. There are children that may get one doll and that doll will probably be used. And I remember um, us going down, of course we took gifts, you know, and you go down and you help feed the homeless and things like that. But that visual aid, that's always a very, because I think a lot of times uh, people in general, they can't connect to less than, mm -hmm. right? They can't connect to struggle because they've really never really struggled. So I think that's important. Um, 
growing up, uh, you know, I, I have never had any problems with um, any kind of an addiction or anything like that. And one of the things that helped was that I remember one day my dad put me in the car. I was going to go into middle school. And we drove down and we sat on the corner of a street. And, he's, and he would always say this, this is not to judge, but I want you to be aware of what's out in the world. And he said, do you see the woman sitting across the street? And I said, yes. And um, this was a time when... I had come home, I, I purchased my own car, so I was very excited, and I, I, was, I wasn't behaving really appropriately, just I was kind of being a little brat, you know. And so I just remember him saying, this woman has made certain choices that has put her here on the street. And, and he says, you see, just the, we could hear her talking, mm -hmm. he hear her slurring, and he says, unfortunately, there wasn't someone there helping her make different choices or helping her to collect her thoughts or helping her to find her value. All of these different things. And he says, so you really want to be aware of how you think and what you take for granted because there is always someone that has less than you. And I think that that's a beautiful way to help people to remember how to find gratitude in life is that just because you have a tree in your house and you actually have a roof over your head, not everybody has that. And I think it's powerful, especially with the internet now, to help your children see that there's a lot of things going on in the world. To have some perspective, mm -hmm. right? That's correct. That, that our hardship really is just a hiccup. It's not a hardship. You know, it's, it, it's interesting, and this is completely unrelated to the holidays, but it's interesting how you bring that up about gratitude, and it reminds me of this friend of mine that was very wealthy, and he bought a home in a, a new community within Utah. And I bought my first house as a single mom, this modest little house. And he comes to my housewarming party and he says to me, he says, I envy your house. Mm. You know, here's this guy, the multi, multi-millionaire, and he envies my house. Mm -hmm. Because I've got this modest little house with all these mature, beautiful trees and he has this mega house out in a new development that has no trees whatsoever because it's brand new. Right. <laughs> and so it was just funny to get that kind of perspective on how right. somebody that has so much could just say, gosh, I really envy what you have. <laughs> I had that same thing as a child with my Christmases. Mm -hmm. A lot of my friends who were, had a lot more money in their families were very envious of the Christmases that I would have. Because mm -hmm. I got to spend so much time with my grandma and my parents and my siblings and it was... Mm -hmm. There was warmth and there was yes. love. And you can feel love oh, in the tangible. air. Oh, it's tangible. When, when there is love, it, it does. It's warm, it uplifts you, and you can literally, like, touch it. Mm -hmm. I, at this point in my life, I don't get really gifts anymore, right? So my children don't uh, usually give me gifts. Sometimes my adult daughter will. And my parents can't get gifts for all of their kids and grandkids. Sure. There's too many of, there are too many of us now. So I will get maybe one or two gifts from a close friend or something, but it's not about that at this point, right, right. in life. But I don't even think about that piece of the holidays. It, it, whenever someone even mentions the holidays, the first thing I think of is family, like Jody mentioned. Mm -hmm. Time together, sitting around talking, laughing. We have a tradition in my family for Thanksgiving that we rewrite Thanksgiving poems and read them out loud. Oh, really? And sometimes they're very touching and they make us cry, and sometimes they're hilarious and they make us laugh. Yeah. And then we post them to the rest of the family. I have a brother and sister that both live out of state. And they look forward every year to seeing our Thanksgiving poems. It's those type of traditions. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. the, We've been doing that, right. I don't even know how many years by right. now. But it's that's the type of stuff that I look forward to. Absolutely. That's the type of stuff my children will remember. Absolutely. And that's to me what it's all about. It's like, what's going to last? Mm hmm What's going to mean something to me 20 years from now? And that your children yeah. carry with them for years and years the to come. The feeling of That's it. That's correct. To their children and their children. Yeah. So I think that uh, today, really the subject is brilliant, Jody. that we are addressing this right now. Because I think that a lot of the reason there is so much stress is people have lost their way. They've lost family. They've lost, lost creating that moment, that feeling. And they've lost the value of how important gratitude is and that importance of 
being in the situation with a person, not what did I get from that person and how much it was. Anything else to add before we close? I just mm -hmm. hope everyone out there has a wonderful holiday season and that they remember what matters the most to them. Absolutely. Exactly. I would say pick out a tradition that doesn't have anything to do with money. Create something new, something fun, and enjoy the time with the people that you love. Yes. All right. Thank you again for joining us. While you're out in the world, find the good in your day, and your day will bloom a bit easier. Talk to you later.